Hello and welcome everyone to IT Pro Guide. Mohammed Niyas with you. AWS networking series and you are on the fifth video that is about network access control list. Following are the topics that we are going to cover. What is network ACL? What is a security group? And a demo on how to work on the default network ACL. How to create a custom network access control list then how to spin an instance, how to assign network ACL to that instance and how to open ports, how to access it. So this will give you a complete idea about network access control list. Network access control list and security group work together, but we keep the security group ports opened allowed in this. We are not going to touch on security group in this video. In the upcoming video, we're going to talk about security group and also we will do a complete lab with a combination of network access control list and security group. The security group and network ACL are firewalls and one for the subnet and one for the instance. Network access control list is for the subnet, which means if you have any rules enabled or denied on the network axial, it is applicable for all the instances running in that subnet. But any rules on the security groups which are applicable only for the instance assigned. So now network ACL and security group are clear I believe. I wish to keep the security group topic untouched in this video and we spent all the time to dig on network ACL. So let us start with network ACL. It is a firewall controlling in and out of one or more subnets. So total in AWS you get a two layer of security with network ACL and security group. So when you look at the default virtual private cloud default VPC you can see a default network ACL and that is modifiable and that need to be modified don't keep it as it is the reason is by default it allows all inbound and outbound traffic. But when you create a custom network ACL, by default it denies all inbound and outbound traffic. So this is exactly opposite with the default network ACL. So why I said this, if you have a virtual machine running on the default network ACL, RDP works straight away without any configuration on the network ACL. You don't need to open any ports. But if it is running on a custom network ACL, then you need to open port for RDP access. So this is a difference and easy way to understand. All subnets in a VPC must be associated with a network ACL. It is must. And you cannot assign more than one network ACL to one subnet. Network ACL are stateless. What is that? If you are new to the firewall, this might be a new term for you. A stateless means you need to create separate rules for inbound and outbound connection. On that account, changes applicable to an incoming rule will not be applicable to an outgoing rule. With an example, we can say if you want your instance to communicate over port 80 HTTP, then you have to add an inbound as well as an outbound rule allowing port 80 in network ACL. So it is not automatically added. You have to add inbound and outbound port in the network ACL for your HTTP port 80 to communicate in and out. So in AWS you can list rules with rule numbers and the evaluation from AWS start with lowest numbered rule. So as soon as a rule matches with the traffic it is applied regardless of any higher numbered rule that might contradict it. So for example, you have two rules for a same port, for example port 80 and rule number 100 to allow and rule number 200 to deny. Then the result is always keep the traffic on port 80 allowed because the lower number is going to be executed regardless of what has written in the higher numbers. So that is all about network ACL. Let's move to the demo session. So what we're going to do is we're going to work on the default network ACL first, then we create a custom network ACL. Then we're going to create some rules for an instance to access RDP that is 3389. Then an RDP port is not enough 
to access an instance you need to add ephemeral ports also that also will explain in the in the demonstration session so we see how to spin up an instance and how to access it with rdp after we associate a custom network ACR. Log into AWS Management Console, then go to VPC. Either you can select from the recent visited services if you have, or you can just go to the network and content delivery, then click on VPC. Now you can see there is one VPC that is default VPC, and there is one network ACL that is a default network ACL, and we have one security group. These are all default and we have six subnet. Let's go to the network ACL. So this is the default uh, VPC. Then you can customize it if you want. You can put some name for your understanding. Then there are six subnets associated with network AC, this network ACL. So and this is the VPC assigned to this network ACL. When you click on your VPC, you can see I have only one VPC with a CIDR block. And uh, when you drag this, you will see that this is the, the default VPC ACL is the one we assigned to this. So there is no uh, additional NACL other than the default uh, configurations. So if I want to create a new network ACL, I can create it from here. Before that, let us look at the default NACL inbound and outbound rules. Now you can see as I explained in the slides, all the traffics are allowed and also for the outbound all the traffics are allowed all the subnet that comes under vpc are at present associated to this def uh, default nscl now let us go and create a new network acl give a meaningful name first for your understanding i'm going to put custom nscl on default vpc then select default vpc now we have created a custom network access list on default VPC when then when you look at the inbound rule of the default VPC you can see that the ports are allowed at the same time on the custom VPC the ports are denied so this is one of the major difference between the default network ACL and also the custom network ACL so this need to be very careful because when you put your production workloads you need to be very careful about this then there are six subnets in this availability zone and all the subnets are assigned to default VPC. There is no subnet at present with the custom network ACL. Let us edit the subnet and select one subnet from it. Then move it to the custom network ACL that we have created. Now the network ACL have one subnet at the same time when you look at the default VPC, it has reduced it from six to five. So one subnet can have only one network ACL at a time. Then in the custom NACL, you can create inbound and outbound rules. For example, you can add rules here, uh, 100. It's always uh, uh, recommended to keep rules like 100, 200, 300, so that you can add the rules in between also if you need. Then custom TCP, then 3389, for example, for RDP. then click save now only the inbound rdp port has opened we need to do the same thing as it is a stateless we need to do the same in the outbound also for that uh, go to edit and add then rule number 100 then port 3389 then click save so now the RDP role has created. So this is how now the RDP role has created. So this is how to work. So now if you launch an instance on this subnet that you will get a, a port connection for the RDP 3389. Allowing port 3389 is not just enough to access your remote desktop. There is something else called ephemeral ports, which are short-lived transport protocol ports for the internet protocol communication. So the way, the best way to understand is, when a client initiate a request, it choose a random port from the ephemeral port range and it, and it expects the response at that port only. I think that is not enough. We can say that a client initiates an HTTPS or HTTP request 
it actually means the destination port is 443 or 80 it is not the center port when you look at the example this is an headset command which i run in my system you can see there are many https connections it made at the same time you can see the client side you will see that there are different ports it is utilizing so these are from the ephemeral port range and it vary depends upon the client operating system so we need to add this ephemeral port also into the network acl in inbound and outbound then the rdb access will work when you go to the ephemeral port documentation in aws you will see that the client initiates the request chooses the ephemeral port range varies de depending upon the client's operating system now we're going to run an instance of windows server so let us copy this ephemeral port range and create it in the network acl so this is the custom network acl then go to the inbound edit then add rule do the same in the outbound also Now let us create a Windows Server and assign this custom NS here and see how it works. We don't have any instance at present. Click on launch instance. Then select a Windows base image in free tier. Then go to the configuration details. Then choose an availability zone. So the purpose of this demo is to demonstrate the custom NS here. So we need to make sure that the subnet that we're gonna select here for this instance is associated with the custom NS here that we have created. Let us go to VPC and confirm it. When you go to the subnet, you can see that this is the custom one which is availability zone 1E and this is the subnet id let us put a subnet id for this one for example protection so it would be easy for us to understand when we create a virtual instance let's go back to ec2 then go to the instance launch instance then select the windows image then click on configuration details then now it is easy for us to to understand this is production then you will get a auto assigned public ip address so that is enough let's click on review and launch button then launch the instance i have an existing key pair so i acknowledge and click on launch instance now you can view the progress of the instance initialization now the instance is ready, let's get the password, browse the key pair, then decrypt the password. Now let us connect this. Now you can see the RDP is working. Now if you run the net stat command you will see that why the ephemeral port is required now we can see that this is the destination address and it use 443 port and this is the ephemeral port that this client machine are using and this is the ephemeral port that used by this machine so if you didn't enable ephemeral ports then this port not able to communicate so only the first time it used 3389 then it used after the connection established it used ephemeral port range to send the traffic so that is why we need ephemeral port for any kind of communication and that varies depends upon the client operating system so as i show you the aws documentation you will find the ephemeral port that used by the operating system 
If you have any custom application which use a different range of ephemeral ports, then that also you need to enter into NACL. Thank you for watching this video. In the coming video, we're going to talk about security group and we're also going to do a lab with network access control list and security group together. So that will give you a complete idea about network ACL and security group. Thank you for watching this video. For more videos, subscribe our YouTube channel.